healthy kids Give it back to my community We're growing justice in a natural way Making a difference every day In the big, big garden Meet me in the big, big garden Hello everyone, welcome to today's Farm to School lesson. My name is Elagia and we're going to be learning about brassicas and potatoes. We're going to be learning what potatoes are, types of brassicas, we're going to make a broccoli and cauliflower veggie wash, and also a veggie shaped potato snack. Now let's get started. You might have had a brassica and not known it was a brassica. A brassica is a genius of the cabbage and mustard family. Some examples of brassicas you may know are broccoli, cauliflower, and some other examples are things like Brussels sprouts and cabbage. Most brassicas are biennials. I bet you're wondering what a biennial is. A biennial is a plant that takes about two years to complete its biological life cycle. A type of brassica that is a biennial plant is a cabbage. So for instance, if you wanted a cabbage to produce seed, you would have to wait until the next growing season. So it would have to overwinter. Now let's talk about potatoes. What are potatoes? Most people think that potatoes are a root vegetable, but they're not. A potato is considered a tuber. But what is a tuber? A tuber is a thick underground plant part that is used to store the nutrients and organs of a plant. Most tubers can produce themselves. So do you see how the potato has spores on it? This potato is trying to recreate a new plant for the next growing season. So most people think that you plant potatoes with seeds, but you actually plant a potato with another potato. So these little spores, you can just cut part of it off and then plant it underground. And voila, another potato plant. When buying vegetables from the grocery store, it's really important to make sure it's thoroughly washed. They say that broccoli is one of the dirtiest plants due to its small florets. So many tiny creatures can hide in between the little flowers. Some type of bugs that live in broccoli are spider mites, flea beetles, and broccoli worms. Before we start our vegetable wash, let's check with the magnifying glass to see if we can find anything. So I'm just gonna take my magnifying glass and just look closely to see if I see any creatures. You can also pull apart the florets to see if there's anything hiding in the crevices. So after examining my broccoli, it doesn't look like there's many bugs that I can't see, at least by my naked eye. So what we're going to do now is still wash the broccoli because it's always important to wash any vegetable that we purchase. So now let's make our broccoli and cauliflower veggie wash. All right, so we have let our veggie wash sit for about 15 minutes. And so what I'm going to do, just temporarily remove the vegetables um, out of my bowl just to see if I can see anything floating or maybe something on the vegetables that I didn't want to eat. So I'm just going to put it right here on my cutting board. And then we're just going to examine the water. And if you have a magnifying glass, feel free to use that too. I think there is one tiny bug at the bottom of the bowl that I see. So as I'm examining, I don't really see much. I see maybe one small bug at the bottom of the bowl and just some specks of dirt. So like I said, it's always good to just be very thorough in washing your vegetables. So after you let your veggies soak in the water and examine to see if there's any creatures or anything that shouldn't be on them that's in the water, um, all you need to do is just thoroughly rinse your veggies off just because we use vinegar, you don't want them to taste like vinegar. So thoroughly rinse your veggies off and then enjoy however you want to enjoy them. So next we're gonna make a veggie shaped potato snack. When making the snack, make sure to have an adult present because we're using things like the oven and sharp objects like a knife. So it's really good to have an adult present helping you out. So this activity, like I said, we're making um, veggie shaped potatoes. And then also there's an optional sriracha mayo recipe if you or your family like sriracha mayo. So for this recipe, you'll need a potato. You can use one or two and just make sure they are well rinsed. And then I have some seasonings that you can use to um, flavor your potato. So I have sea salt, garlic powder, and then I also have paprika, 
and black pepper. If you're going to make the sriracha mayo with our potato snack, you'll need sriracha sauce, lemon juice, sugar, which is optional just in case it's too spicy for you, some mayo, chipotle powder, and salt and any other of the other spices that we have to taste. Let's get started. Before we start cutting our potato, make sure to preheat your oven to 400 degrees. And so I'm gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna cut my potato the long way and try to cut medium to thin slices. So I'm just gonna chop it like that. And I wanna make sure to try to chop it all the way through to get one clean slice so that I can put my veggie cutter on the potato. Okay, so this is about the size that my potato slices should look like in thickness. You can cut it thinner if you would like or thicker if you would like. So now I'm gonna take my veggie cutters and press into the potato. So now that my potatoes are cut, I can get my veggie cutters. You can get them at most stores. If you don't have a veggie cutter, then maybe with an adult, you guys can use a paring knife, a small knife, and just carve a sh vegetable shape into your potatoes. But for this veggie cutter pack, I have a pepper. I believe this is an onion. A carrot. A broccoli, which is a brassica, corn, a tomato, and this is a radish or a turnip. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take a potato slice and move my other ones out the way, and then take one of my vegetables, which I'm going to choose a carrot first, and I'm just gonna press very firmly into my potato. This could potentially hurt your hands, so use like a plate or a rag if it's too hard for you. So I'm gonna take it and just wiggle a little bit to make sure my shape is intact. And then I can pull my potato up on the other side. So there is the outline. And here is the carrot shaped potato. So next I'm gonna take a broccoli since we're talking about brassicas. And I think this potato slice is too small for the broccoli so I'm gonna to try to find a bigger one. And then just going to repeat my step and just press firmly. And now we have a broccoli shaped potato. So I'm just gonna cut the rest of them and then we can continue on with our recipe. Big, big so I finished cutting out all of my potato shapes and you can use the scraps as well. Um, you can cook them or you can compost them. For now, I'm just gonna set them to the side. And this is what my um, veggie shaped potatoes look like. So now it's time to oil my pan and season them and get them ready to go in the oven. For this recipe, I'm using olive oil, but just use whatever oil you have on hand. And I'm just gonna take a little bit and pour it onto my pan. And then I like to use a paper towel to coat it and just wipe off any like excess oil I don't need. So I'm just gonna rub my paper towel on my pan. And now it's time to add my veggies. I'm just gonna take my veggie shaped potatoes and just kind of space them out so they have room to cook. And this is what it should look like on the pan. How cute is that? And next I'm just gonna add my seasonings. For this, I'm gonna sprinkle salt, just pinch with my hands, and then the rest of the seasonings I'll use 
a teaspoon, but just use however much you feel like you want on your veggies. So I put my sea salt and next I'm gonna do smoked paprika. And I'm just gonna take my teaspoon and just sprinkle it on my potatoes. So you can do that on one side and then you can flip your potato over to the other side so the other side can be seasoned as well. Next, I'm going to do some garlic powder. And last, I'm just going to take some black pepper and sprinkle it on top of my veggies. And this is what my veggies look like after I coated them in my seasoning. And now they're ready to put in the oven. So I'm going to heat them on 400 degrees for 25 minutes flipping halfway through. So make sure to be near your kitchen just to keep an eye on them in case anything happens. So while we put them in the oven, we're gonna start our sriracha mayo recipe. Let's make our sriracha mayo. So the first ingredient I'm gonna use is the mayo and I'm gonna use a cup of it and put it into a small medium sized bowl. And I'm going to use a spoon to kind of help guide my mayo into the measuring cup. Okay, so this is my cup of mayo and I'm going to just scrape it into the bowl and try to get as much of the mayo from the measuring cup into the bowl as I can. And I'm going to save this spoon for later because I'm going to use it to mix. Now I'm going to add some lemon juice. I'm going to add a tablespoon. And the lemon juice is just for like a little zesty flavor. But also if you wanted to keep this for a couple days, lemon juice is a preservative. So the mayo mix wouldn't go bad. So I'm going to take my tablespoon and just add some lemon juice into it and pour it in my bowl. So now it's time to add my sriracha. I'm going to add about two tablespoons. And if you want it spicier, you can add more. If it is too spicy, like I said, there's optional of some sugar that you can put in your mayo. So I'm just going to scoop two tablespoons. Great. So this is what our mixture is starting to look like. It doesn't look very appetizing, but we're going to add some seasonings and then mix it together. The first seasoning I'm going to add is some chipotle powder, and I'm going to add about two teaspoons of it. Next, I'm going to add some paprika and I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon to it. Okay. 
Then we're going to add about a half a teaspoon of some garlic powder. And then I'm just going to pinch some salt in there to taste. And you can also pinch some black pepper as well. So this is what my mixture looks like now. I think it looks a little bit better with the seasonings, but now we're going to mix it all together. And you can use a spoon or a whisk or whatever you have on hand that's good for mixing. And just try to do your best to scrape the edges to make sure all of it's getting thoroughly mixed. And it kind of starts to turn this pretty orange brown color. All right, so this is what my final product is looking like. And give it a taste to see if you want to add any more ingredients, make it sweeter, make it spicier. So now that our sriracha mayo is done, we can check on our potatoes to see if they're ready to eat. Thank you for joining me today as we learned about brassica and potatoes. In this lesson, we learned about what brassicas are, what potatoes are, how to make a vegetable, cauliflower, and broccoli wash, and a veggie-shaped potato snack. Next time there's a brassica in your house, see if you can make a vegetable wash so it's thoroughly cleaned. See you next time. Mmm, it's so good. Try this at home.